Hello everybody, Ben Rogers here of the Raptors Digest, breaking down five potential buyout targets for the Toronto Raptors. Riker, the trade deadline has passed. We ended up flipping Goran Dragic for Thaddeus Young and Drew Eubanks. We've broken that down a bunch over the past week, but... We ended up waving Drew Eubanks, as we mentioned on previous podcasts, and that has opened up a roster spot for this team to go hunting onto the buyout market. Riker, you think we're going to pick anyone up on this buyout market? Are you excited to break down this list? You would hope we pick somebody up because we've made a spot for someone, and <laughs> we're still missing that piece, Ben, so let's get into it. For sure. And the first guy on our list is a guy that everyone has been talking about on the Raptors Reddit page, our comment section, everywhere. And it's Moses Brown. Ever since the summer, Riker, because he's 7-2. The stats aren't why people are talking about him. Three points, two rebounds a game. You know, point three blocks. Nothing too, too crazy. But he's young, he's long, he's tall. Should the Toronto Raptors go and acquire Moses Brown on the buyout market? And the Raptors definitely like him for two reasons. One, he's seven foot two. Two, he's cheap. $1.7 million on whatever team he's playing for now. Mavericks? Who is he on? I believe he was bought out. He was straight out bought out. Like He, he was, was out bought out. Yep. So he's 1.7, which will put him at the same price tag as Isaac Bonga and Speed Mihailuk. And I'm sure that he would get minutes over both of those gentlemen. Bonga, who hasn't really made any time outside of the G League. So would we expect big things? No. Would we expect the playoff difference maker? Probably not. But is this an actual seven foot two guy or seven footer? Yes. So if he slips down to the, you know, the last guy remaining, wouldn't be a bad pickup. Yeah. Well, the Raptors, they love their length. They love not necessarily their height, but guys that can be mobile and switch. And while Moses Brown does have that length, that's the one thing that is definitely there. Those long arms and he's young and all that sort of stuff. I don't think he fits the Toronto Raptors system. I'm not buying into the hype that everyone's sort of been bringing up about Moses Brown because, yes, in theory, he's a solid chop blocker. Yes, in his rookie year, he put up 20-20 games, big games against the Toronto Raptors. I think he had a night where he had eight blocks in a single game record, but in the modern NBA, in the especially the way that the Toronto Raptors play defense, we switch everything, right? We have guys moving all over the defensive systems, and we've seen a veteran and Thaddeus Young struggled just to, to pick up the offense, at least in his first game, even though you can tell he's pretty basketball savvy. I think bringing in Moses Brown into this squad, unless it's sort of a long-term play where you want to develop him and do all this sort of stuff with him, right? I don't think he's going to have an effect on the team this season. If you know we're looking for a seven-footer, I think there's other guys out there on the market which would be better targets. And He's not going to be a guy that can be inserted into our team right now and help us in playoff contention, help us to make this push at the end of the year. So I'm not buying it. If we can't get anyone and there's just that open roster space, now with that extra cap flexibility, I bring him in just for the potential. You know, maybe we can Miami Heat a Hassan Whiteside sort of situation there where even though Hassan Whiteside's career has taken a dip, but maybe he could give that value long term. But this season, I don't see too, too much with him. Nope. Fair enough, Ben. And the other thing outside of seven footers, it's bench scores. Who's the next guy we have that we're looking at in the buyout market here? Well, Riker, the next guy we're talking about in this uh, in this buyout market is better stats, better box score at least than Moses Brown. But uh, I don't know how Raptors fans are going to feel about him. Eric Bledsoe, 10 points per game, three rebounds, four assists, 31% of the three-point line. You look at this and you say, hey, a guy that we know can defend, we know is a veteran, we know can do all these sorts of things, but... You know, I guess at a cheap price in a buyout market coming off the bench, would you be comfortable inserting him over a Malachi Flynn, over a Delano Banton to be that backup guard as we make that playoff push? Or have you seen too much of Eric Bledsoe choking in playoff time situations? He uh, couldn't make it work in his dual role as a starter slash bench guy on the Clippers. Mm -hmm. He couldn't make it work playing in tandem with Lonzo Ball over on the Pelicans. I was actually getting flamed on my Instagram page by a Pelicans fan after the Raptors <laughs> lost last night, saying, have fun picking up Bledsoe in the buyout market. And he certainly couldn't make it work on the pre-champion Milwaukee Bucks that they had to trade him for Drew Holiday. So this is a guy that's had the opportunity to play for a variety of teams that are both competing and not competing. Starter, bench roll, never made it work in anything. I would stay away from him if I was a Raptor. 
Yeah. The the one thing is the veteran presence, and all these guys haven't necessarily been bought out. It's all they're all rumored guys that are could potentially be bought out. Just want to say this: I'm not 100 percent sure if he's been officially bought out just yet by the Portland Trailblazers, but you might want to double check that there. But Eric Bledsoe, Eric Bledsoe off the bench, I. You know what you're going to get from Eric Bledsoe. You're not going to get the most reliable three-point shooter. You're not going to get a guy that is going to be consistently breaking people down and doing all these sorts of things. However, you will get a guy that plays solid defense, You know, can run an offense for your team, can get some steals. And I think, obviously, when you're trying to make a playoff push, you want predictability. And Eric Bledsoe, if you don't give him that much of a role, if you don't give him that many responsibilities, he could be a decent player to just have if... You know, Delano Banton goes through another down spell. If Malachi Flynn isn't capable of staying on the court as a defender, you know, in big game situations, right? And we need that sort of off-ball guard. Again, similar with Moses Brown, if it's a last resort, I'm not going to be like that Pelicans fan and be devastated or be roasting the Masai Ujiri if we end up picking him up. But again, not an ideal fit for the Toronto Raptors. I think both you and I would agree. Yeah, absolutely, Ben. So... No to the big, no to the score. We'll flip it back to the big. Who's our next guy that we're looking at? Maybe I have this out of order, but who are we looking at? Oh, we're looking at a big, big guy, big name. Tristan Thompson out the Indiana Pacers has essentially said that once he got traded to Indiana, he wants a buyout this season, averaging five points, five rebounds. Uh, he's been linked to the Toronto Raptors a lot in the past. He's shooting 100% from the three-point line this season. Riker, obviously on a big, big sample size. But if he is bought out by Indiana, obviously they ended up keeping Miles Turner over the trade deadline, even with his injury and even with his rumors going to the Toronto Raptors. Could we finally acquire Tristan Thompson after the years of rumors about him coming to the Raptors? Well, what would excite me about Tristan Thompson as his offensive rebounding. Mm -hmm. What wouldn't excite me is virtually everything else, Ben, his athleticism, his ability to get up and down the court, you know, his lack of post moves or ability to hit a mid-range jumper or stretch the court, his age. I know he's actually not that much older than Chris Boucher, but he looks and feels like he's probably 10 years older than Chris Boucher. I wouldn't be excited to pick up Tristan Thompson. The Kardashian curses that could come in and bestow the Raptors. Obviously, we have the Goron Dragic curse going on now, so I don't know how many more curses we need on this team. But he is a guy that, as you said, he's not even the, you know, he's a, he's a center in the modern NBA, but isn't the big lumbering guy, but can certainly play defense. The offensive rebounding, the Raptors have been one of the best offensive rebounding teams in the league, so maybe he'll be able to just amp that up if he were to be brought in. But... I like him more than Moses Brown. I like his veteran presence. Maybe him on a winning team and a winning organization where he's... Because if Tristan Thompson's brought in, I think he's getting minutes. I just feel like he's a guy that, you know, if you bring in Moses Brown, you can say, okay, play for the 905, develop for us, practice, all these sorts of things. Tristan Thompson, if you're not going to play him, I don't want him on the team, right? I don't want him. But if there's a role to be had for him, if, you know, we want that insurance as a big man... Right, we could be running a really, really big lineups off the bench with Thaddeus Young essentially running the point guard at times because of his passing ability. We got Boucher, we got Birch, we got Precious. That's four big men if we do end up bring, uh, bringing in. Uh, that's just off the bench if we do bring in someone else. So I don't know. I don't want Tristan Thompson to be a deep bench guy as we've seen with the LA Lakers. These big names when they're in the deep bench, they don't necessarily help your team. But if there's a guy that's going to have to be playing minutes, I'd rather him over a Moses Brown and even Eric, Eric Bledsoe. Yeah. And you look back to like the last real season that he played in Boston, which was only kind of a partial season, 50 games. He did get 23 minutes. Mm -hmm. You'd expect if we picked him up, he'd probably get 15 to 20 yeah. minutes on the Raptors. And he pulled in eight boards, three of them offensive season before in Cleveland. I believe that was the, the year after LeBron he started almost every game, 30 minutes, but 10 rebounds, four offensive. So this is a guy that's kind of lived his whole career in the paint, regardless yeah. on what side of the court. So that bit of his game would be promising, Ben, but not as promising as the only guy in this buyout market that I truly like, but also the guy that I would think is least likely to get bought out and we would have the, the smallest chance of getting him. Take it away. Well, Riker, people are saying that Gary Harris is going to be getting bought out. 
that's what maybe people are trying to speak into existence, but I get I'm getting $20 million from the Magic this season. 11 points, two rebounds, two assists, 38% from the three point line. A guy that has. He had star expectations a couple of years ago with the Denver Nuggets, maybe a few years longer, but showed the scoring potential, then slowly, slowly regressed to the point where he was traded to the Orlando Magic in return for Aaron Gordon in that deal last season. And is a player that still went from, you know, young, young budding star to average NBA role player. But you know what? If you can get an average NBA role player to come off your bench, play good defense, knock down threes on the buyout market, that's a guy that you really want to target. Now, if he is inevitably bought out by the Orlando Magic, we will be in some tough competition to acquire him. The Bucks are a team that's rumored. Essentially, when you Google Gary Harris's name, every single team are linked to him if he's potentially bought out. So we'd have some tough competition. I think the opportunity to actually get some series minutes and some, a series role with this team, just given the lack of guard depth we currently have, we have an opening there at that that sort of two backup two guard position. Maybe that would be encouraging him for him. Obviously, the Bucks just lost Pat Connaughton, so maybe that's a team he could potentially go to. But if he's available, Masai Ujiri better better call him in and see if he if we can pick him up. Yeah, Ben, give him some money and let him run. And it's not just for their name's sake, but he is the Gary Trent Jr. light, even though he is a couple of years older than Gary Trent Jr. But Similar games, you know, both guys that are not afraid to shoot it. And it would be great to take some of the ball handling pressure off of Fred Van Vliet when he has to take the inevitable break every now and then. I know he wants to play 44, 45 minutes a game, but as we've seen, at some point the old legs are going to give out. And if we had a ball handler off the bench, that's also a score first mentality. Be perfect for the team. Yep. Three and D can splash some shots. Will be a really nice pickup. But the guy, the final guy we're talking about, feeds everyone seven-footer fantasies. Riker, Robin Lopez. Seven points per game, four rebounds this season. Has, hasn't had the most consistent role. He's quietly developed a three-point shot over his years with, uh, you know, in the NBA with bouncing around from team to team. But he's a guy that's always played solid defense, has a gorgeous little Amir Johnson-esque post hook to finish around the rim. If we're getting a center on this list of potential buyout guys, he's the one I want. He's a veteran. He's a true seven-footer. He guards all that sort of stuff. Rolo fighting mascots. I, I, he feels like a guy that should be on the Toronto Raptors, I feel like. I would agree with you. If there's any center of that list on the like that we just discussed or biomarket in general that we're expecting, this would probably be my top choice for center as well. Same reasons you mentioned, Ben. Yep. The one question is whether this guy will be bought out because – in theory, he should be. The Orlando Magic are log jammed at the center position. Young guys and Rolo hasn't been getting that many minutes this year, and it's been a weird situation down there in Orlando. But, however, apparently they were looking for a first round pick for him at the trade deadline. So I don't know if that means they uh they won't buy him out if they see him as a long term piece. Questionable stuff with the Orlando Magic, as per the huge. But folks, let us know what you guys think. Right, there's a lot of guys that could potentially in the bio market. We veered away from the G League players in this one just because we've already had DJ Wilson. I think that's the guy we'd sign if it's not gonna be a if it's not gonna be a guy that just got bought out or gets on different teams. Nick Stauskis, Sam Decker, any of those. But one bonus player, Riker, he's officially been bought out by the San Antonio Spurs. Goran Dragic back with the Raptors. Yes, no. <laughs> yes, he's the bench scorer we need, Ben. Exactly, exactly. But you guys are the best for making this far. If you made it this far, subscribe to the channel because you get a chance to win this hoodie if it's not claimed by I don't even remember who's who's the most recent winner of this on the giveaways, but tune into our next live because if you're subscribed, that hoodie could be going to you. Check out the Instagram, the Twitter, the TikTok, all that cool stuff. Channel memberships, merch, all rocking still. Riker, do you have any last words on the Raptors buying buying some player on the market? Get me Gary Harris, Ben. Ooh. Cheers. <laughs>